Hi, I'm Michael O'Hein. Hi, I'm Anu Saniwa, and we'll be the host for today's podcast. Welcome back. Uh, for those who don't know, the Scripps Ranch Professional Career Exploration Club is an organization dedicated to interviewing professionals from many different career paths. We aim to help students find a career that's right for them. And we have a very special guest today. Let's give a warm welcome to Gwen Smith. She is an elementary and middle school teacher and soon be principal. Ms. Smith, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right, so uh, firstly, uh, what was the most challenging part of becoming a teacher? So kind of, I don't know, birth up until your career, I guess. Yes, um, well, I was a little distracted when I first started working. I actually was in the insurance field, which was great because they helped me pay for college. However, um, they helped me with business school. And if you're gonna go into teaching, you really need your uh, liberal arts degree. So that was a, kind of a challenge for me because I ended up having to take an additional test or assessment called the MSAT multiple subject assessment. So if you know in advance that you wanna go into education, it would be wise to stick with that educational track, but it doesn't really make it impossible for you to be a teacher. So. Um, I think this is great that you're offering the podcast, obviously, to help people avoid those mistakes. Um, but I, I think just getting on the right educational track was probably the biggest. So what class did you take in either high school or college that prepared you best for teaching? So definitely college. Um, definitely college. Uh, the practical classes about behavior management, uh, curriculum studies, and um, learning about the realities in the classroom, working with students, which we call the 504s and IEPs, those are educational plans, is really important because we really have inclusive classrooms these days. And so you need to be aware of those challenges. Um, so I think really the college coursework most of all, but I think being in the classroom in high school, you definitely learn to find out which teachers you admire and maybe ones that you would want to avoid um, being like. So it's still a learning experience. You take all of that with you in your future and your career. So it makes you a better teacher with all those experiences, but definitely college prepares you for the teaching field. And psychology is a really big part of, you know, becoming educated to become a teacher because I mean, beyond just teaching what you're teaching, you also have to deal with all these individual children each have their own individual problems and you have to manage each and every one of those individually. And it's really difficult if you're not well prepared. So what part of, yeah, that, what part of those like, you know, psychology courses and instructions really helped you out with that? And that's ironic that you say that because really I didn't take psychology, but I've been in teaching for over 20 years and the role has really changed. Um, yes, we used to be just educators and now we're not. We're mentors. We're worried about the kids coming to school. And for instance, we call schools trauma-based trauma, trauma um, schools. Um, we have kids coming in with a lot of different issues these days. So having that psychology component would be very beneficial. I'm not sure if they've added those classes, but when we first started teaching, it was really important that we had to stay in our role. Um, we weren't there to diagnose no students, we were there um, to just teach. And if we had a concern, we'd refer it on. But now we really kind of are, in a way, counselors, psychologists, um, mentors, our roles really diverse now. So you need to keep that in mind. The job is never dull. It's very exciting. Every student's different. I've learned this. Um, I've never met a student that's the same as the other. So you have to adapt and you have to be up for that challenge to make those connections with students. But um, I don't recall taking psychology classes and I think they'd be very beneficial. I am very challenged sometimes when I feel like, wow, I really wish I had a counseling degree and that's not my job. Um, and that frustrates a lot of teachers because they say uh, they came into their career to teach. And you can't teach if the basic needs of the students aren't met. And we have a lot of kids that need that extra support. So you, you raise a good point. I don't know if I answered that. Um, that is a challenge. And yes, psychology background would be very beneficial. So what's the most difficult part of teaching over Zoom that you'd like students and parents to know? And which do you prefer, online teaching or in person? I really feel um, 
excited because I, again, every student is different. And I've actually had the experience of working for online teaching before for five years. So when we um, incurred this COVID and pandemic, I was actually at an advantage because I've already worked in this type of setting before. There are pros and cons of either, but I think um, the most important thing to take away from it is that online is a, a perfectly a uh, successful environment for the right student and the right family, um, but it's not for everyone. And that's the same as the classroom. I've seen kids thrive in online Zoom and um, homeschooling options or online options. And then I've seen the opposite happen. So there's not really a win-win answer. What the win-win is, is that we really want choices for everybody, because I think we're gonna find a lot of people that are in this homeschool end up liking it and now our schools have to adapt to offer it as a permanent option where before they would have to go to online charter schools for that. Um, there's really pros and cons with both but as a teacher it's a learning curve so um, it's exhausting in a different way. Um, it's like you're spinning 50 plates when you're online you really have to be engaging and um, it is different from the classroom both are very exhausting careers but it's different online you have to hit your groove and once you hit your groove and you you um, really master your skills in online it's I would say they're equally challenging um, but again they're just different and I don't know if, if you could even add you've been online too there's pros and cons you can definitely learn and get a great education online but you have to be the right student and you need the right teacher um, so recently you said that schools have not just become like a learning place, it's more of become like a second home for many students. Yes. So um, how do you think that Zoom has affected your ability like, to read people's students' body language and see how exactly where they come from and how they are affected by this? That's a really good question. Um, really teachers are at the forefront right now of understanding, making connections with students and their families. We know that families are the key if you have their, um, if you have a connection and you have good communication with them. Um, but as a teacher, you really have to make those connections. And we do that really at the beginning of the year. Um, if you notice in your own classes, and I know for myself, we don't start the school year just jumping into academics. We really wanna to get to have opportunities to know our class, value each other's backgrounds and differences and see the value and the strength of that. But it does take good communication. It takes open-mindedness. Um, I've been challenged in some of my thinkings with some of the experience I've had. And I can only say that I've grown as an educator through those experiences, but you really have to just put the kids first. You have to be open-minded. And um, I often feel that I learn more than my students in a lot of ways, um, just by getting to know them, what their needs are, what their challenges are. And we really work hard to um, eliminate any obstacles or barriers to their education. Um, example, I work in a low income school and we really tried hard to get all of our students um, the internet, um, I think it's called a boost, a hot zone. I don't know what it is to increase their connectivity. Um, we have kids that are struggling with food on the table and we have to really know the needs of the families to let them know that we have free um, food provided for them. So it's really digging deeper and having personal conversations and knowing your students. Um, so what are the biggest differences between teaching elementary students and teaching middle school students and what challenges does each present? Okay, this is a really good question, especially if you're considering education. So my passion was definitely elementary to begin with because I loved the idea of creating a welcoming classroom that really just got kids excited to come in every day and decorate and do all these fun things. And parents are very involved in the elementary age. Um, so the behavior management with younger kids can be challenging, but I think actually Actually, everyone has a perfect sweet spot for their age group. I think people are inclined to teach college, high school, middle school, or elementary. I think you have to go with your gut, but um, you also change through the process. So let me give you my example and just my personal journey. Um, I've been in now for 20 years, and now 
decorating the classroom and um, doing all these extra things that which elementary is very um, involved in that way is very draining longevity wise in the career. And I have to say that my passion right now is more into the curriculum and um, making that connection with the kids and supporting them with career choices and life situations and and um, when I got my master's degree, I didn't get it in administration because I didn't ever think I wanted to be a principal. And again, I just didn't have that long-term vision that my um, goals would change. And so I would really recommend for anyone considering education, get your master's degree with your bachelor's. And um, if you can get your master's in administration, it will keep the door open for you, even though you may not think that you want to go that route. I was inspired by a lot of leaders I worked with, and I was disappointed in a lot of people I worked for. And so I discovered I'd like to be that leader that I admire. Um, so getting to middle school, this is my first year. It has all been online. So I can tell you, um, I haven't worked with them in person yet, but I start next week. So wish me luck. <laughs> I've already made those connections. And um, I can tell you that the, the conversations again are more academic and I'm supporting them in a different way. And I don't have to spend as much time decorating a classroom and um, things that kind of exhaust you long-term. So um, just keep that in mind if you're considering teaching and um, your degree and, and the path you take can really set you up for success to, to change grade levels across the board if you keep that in mind. I think that's important. And how do you think COVID has changed that student teacher dynamic for you? Um, definitely it's the bonding with kids. So again, remember, as I said, it can bring out the best in some students and find that it's a strength. And then for others, it can definitely be a challenge. So if you have a student and my sons are exactly in this, I have one that's thriving and one that's becoming more quiet. Um, he's more introverted. So um, it's really making that connection to find out what do they need to make them successful and reminding them those that aren't this isn't their forte or their best learning environment to let them know this is a short-term issue. Like we're coming back next week. So making the phone calls, I offer something called office hours, which is just myself and anybody that um, needs to come. And if someone's not attending class or not getting their work done, I personally invite them and I say, here's my link, come. And I have to show them that I'm not here to judge them. I know it's a difficult time. I need to relate with them. I need to let them know I'm sad setting them up for success. So what can we do to make it um, successful for them? And that just might be meeting in a smaller group than the whole class because they're shy. I think at uh, certain age groups, they don't like having a camera on them. I've had a lot of foreheads. I'm like, hey, a forehead's good. I know you're there, <laughs> but we have to find a win-win. We need them successful academically and socially, um, but we have to make those connections and be flexible. That's just part of the job. So alongside being a teacher, we know that you're trying to become a principal. So what's the most challenging part of the principal education and application process? Ooh, okay, this one, this was the hardest thing I've ever done. Um, so uh, again, it wasn't my plan. My master's degree was not in administration. So what I did in order to set myself up for success is I called the administrative office in my district. And the first thing I asked was what program are they seeing people finishing that they are um, liking that, that that the employees that they're hiring from that program are successful and I thought that was important because if if the hiring department in my district likes these graduates from a specific program then that would be my clue to go there that's a highly rated program so that's what I did first of all and um, so I took their recommendation and it was a two-year program it was all day on Saturday from 8 to 3 30 it's really exhausting when you are a parent when you're working full-time and then going to school full-time however the work was inspiring. It was relevant. It was exactly what I needed to do. Um, it really took me in a different direction and I've networked and met a lot of people and then you have a cohort like college. So I've met a lot of people that um, were really 
um, pretty much leaders in the industry because you did have to apply and you had to get accepted in the program. So you need to show that you volunteer, that you have uh, been nominated for um, leadership skills in the field. And um, so you definitely want to go the extra mile and have those items on your resume. Um, dynamic programs that you're a part of, any extra teaching. So yes, they do take people that have those awards and have that recognition um, because they are looking for leaders in being a principal. That's another, another uh, dynamic job in itself. But yes, I hope I answered the question. <laughs> I hope I answered that. Uh, so what subject do you teach and um, what advice can you give students struggling with this topic at any level? Okay, so this is again COVID through everything for a loop, right? So I was hired specifically as a seventh grade reading specialist and then our school found out that they had 300 students opting for home homeschool option this year. So my principal called me and asked me if I would take an eighth grade all subject classes, yes, all subjects. And I, I was like, all subjects in eighth grade, I come from middle school but or elementary school. And then I stopped myself and I said, well, elementary school is all subjects. So the only difference is the eighth grade curriculum. So you have to know your strengths and weaknesses. So for me, um, knowing that math has changed a lot, I knew that I would have support in the area which I know my weakness would be and that's eighth grade math. I haven't taught eighth grade math. I haven't done eighth grade math in a long time, um, but we have um, support teachers in education and in my district, they're called TOSAs, Teachers on Special Assignments. So they have curriculum specialists. So I immediately networked with the um, eighth grade math TOSA. I said, listen, I'm coming to eighth grade. I'm not afraid to ask for support. I want to be successful, not only for myself, but most importantly, my students. I don't want them to fall behind in math because I'm new. Um, so I got the math toast. I said, can you come teach the first two weeks lessons so I can see how you model it? And then I can take that ball and run. And that gave me two weeks to research the curriculum. It gave me opportunities to watch from a leader in that subject matter. So you don't want to isolate yourself if you're a teacher. You need to ask for help in any subject that you know is your personal weakness or where you're struggling, even if it's behavior management. And one thing I find I'm successful at is I'm not afraid to ask for help because I want to learn and get better. And so eighth grade, I did all subjects. And if someone's having any difficulty in subjects, um, the, the biggest thing you need to know is that that you need to find those support staff at your site that are there to help because they have office hours, they have tutoring. I know there's peer-to-peer -peer tutoring, which I think is phenomenal. And then if you're not familiar with Khan Academy, Khan Academy is a website that literally teaches any subject. And a lot of families don't know this, but it was created so all children, all students and learners have access to exceptional lessons in any subject, regardless where you live. So if they don't understand a lesson in class, go watch that same topic in Khan Academy here in a different way. And that should set you up for success. Um, so how does teaching differ in every school level, like preschool, elementary, middle school, and high school, and then also college? And what are the pros and cons of each? Okay, so are you saying as a teacher in those levels? Yes, as a teacher. Okay, how does so it this is interesting. If you become a multiple subject teacher like myself, I knew right off the bat that fourth grade was my my um, sweet spot. I like 10 year olds. They're kind of sassy. <laughs> they ask good questions. They're still polite and they love learning and coming to school. Um, so I know that that's my grade. But when you become an elementary teacher in multiple subject, you're literally credentialed in most cases kindergarten through eighth grade or kindergarten through high school. Um, so you have to check your credential program. Now, <laughs> it's funny because I felt very competent getting hired in elementary. And yes, I got my sweet grade, fourth grade, love it, happy with them, completely different from kindergarten. And uh, when I moved to another school, they said, we need you for kindergarten. I about freaked out. My face does not lie at all. I was like, I would be happy to do that. And in my head spinning 500 miles an hour, I told myself, my self-talk, if you can teach kindergarten, 
you can do anything. <laughs> so again, I know my pros and cons. Kindergarten, you don't know what they're going to do. You literally have to tell kindergartners when they have the glue, you need to hold it upright. Fourth grade, you don't have to do that. I mean, it's, it's for me, it's mentally exhausting teaching kindergartners because you have to think of every little step. And some people are really geared for kindergarten and they get it and that's their forte. And that I just hats off to kindergarten teachers. They're amazing to me. I did get through my kindergarten year. I know I can teach it now. I, I conquered the fear. So don't be afraid of a grade level. If you, if you get hired in one that that wasn't your um, sweet spot, just take the job because you're gonna learn again so much. And I did learn that kindergarten is a beautiful grade level. It is completely a different ball game. So I can't believe that you get a, a multiple subject credential and it's so different from kindergarten to say sixth grade, it's day and night. Um, so you just network and you work with your team. You're not alone in your job. You really work a lot with the team. So you're never alone. And um, pros and cons, again, for me personally, um, elementary is draining um, longevity long-term because of you're teaching multiple subjects. You're teaching everything, PE, math, language arts, science, everything. It's exhausting. And I will be honest with you, there's days where I felt like I never got to teach my subject well because I'm spread so thin teaching everything. And that's, that's true. I don't really know anyone that feels like they're just great. They might be a great math teacher. They might be great with social studies. It's their, their cup of tea. But to teach all those subjects every day and bond with the students like we talked about, it's, it's a lot. Now, if you go up to middle school, you're talking about, generally speaking, a single subject credential. So if you know that you love math and you love teaching math, being good in math does not make you a good math teacher. I, I honestly feel like I struggled in math. I'm a better math teacher because when a kid isn't getting it, I can say, I understand where you're stuck. Let's try it this way. So you have to keep in mind, just because you're good in a subject, you also have to know, are you, are you good at teaching it? Do you have patience for someone that's not clicking? Because that's important. But let's say, for instance, um, history is your passion. You love it. If you go to middle school or high school as a history teacher, I originally thought that would be really boring teaching history all day long, the same subject, the same subject. But now where I am in my career with 20 years, I think it's beautiful because I would rather perfect it. I would rather master the craft of teaching history. And I don't know if you can imagine how deep you could go and like bringing artifacts, explaining the maps. Um, you know, a lot of kids don't like history. So you really have to bring it alive and you have to show them um, why history is important and how it relates to them. So you've got to be passionate about your subject. But um, so again, if you think you'll be bored teaching one subject, middle school and high school, that could be an issue. Otherwise, you might think the opposite. You would say that's just awesome to only focus on one subject. Amazing, amazing. Um, there's less parent involvement as you go up. So when you're really trying to reach the, the kids' parents and we know that that connection is important, that makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, college teaching, I've assisted in college teaching. I have not been hired as a college um, teacher, but that is something I look forward to doing after having experience as a principal. That's really a lovely thing to do, I think, especially once you've had the, the experience and the career. So I could definitely teach college level. I have the education, um, but I'm not done yet. I, I still want to work as a principal. And you really want to learn from people that have taught in the field and have that experience. It adds to their validity. It adds to their understanding. And you learn a lot. So when I went through the principal program, I taught, I was taught by principal leaders in uh, the San Diego area, and they were instrumental in helping me know the challenges. I hope I gave the pros and cons. It gives you something to think about. Um, so how do you balance being strict versus lenient with your students? Okay, so again, remember, we know our strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> um, being strict, if you can tell from my personality, is really hard because I just I just enjoy working with kids so much. And so when I meet them, I'm, I'm going to be strict and 
because I know how important I am not going to underestimate behavior management is critical for your success. You can just have a really hard year. You're always going to have behavior challenges. That's just a fact. You have so many kids in the classroom and one student can change the dynamics. Um, but um, yeah, so I do try to go in strict. I think consistency is key. You have to be consistent and you have to be fair. Um, the behavior management and how you um, handle that is different elementary versus middle school. Um, but I can tell you in elementary, when I say strict, strict does not mean mean. Um, this is really important. I've had this philosophy from day one. You don't power over children. You don't power over students. You have to win them over. Kids are very smart. They know um, what sincere um, conversation is. So you have to just really um, have consistency, be fair, and clear expectations from the beginning. Um, I have to say, I'm not very strict in that regard. I like, I just like to use humor and laugh. Um, it has worked for me, but um, I would say there are times where I'm like, oh, I wish I would have just been a little bit stricter at the beginning. Um, but that's always been a challenge for me, not behavior management, but I, I've seen classrooms where teachers really have perfected it. And I've always been in awe. You can compare yourself to, all the teachers you want to, you have to honor yourself and what you bring to the table. I know what my gifts are with my kids and um, I have to remember consistency and fair and um, that's really what I go with. Um, so you're very passionate about teaching. So could you give us an elevator pitch on why students should become teachers? Yes. Um, so teaching is not for everybody. I think you really have to ask yourself some questions. Um, are you patient? Do you like um, problem solving? Do you like working with others? You don't want to be isolated. Um, Let's see, are you open to feedback? Cause you're gonna get feedback. You have to have thick skin in this field cause you'll have someone come in and say, try this, try that. You really need to know that they're there to help you. Um, teaching is a great career. It, it is wonderful. You can move fluidly throughout. You can change, like I said, grade levels. So if you were getting bored and you wanted a challenge, um, that's something that you don't really have in this career is being bored. And again, there's opportunity for advancement. And so if you've taught elementary and you're like, hey, I need to change, you could go to middle school, you can go to high school, you can go into administration. Um, as far as retirement's concerned, you do get your pension, you can invest in, it in um, retirement. Um, you're not gonna be rich as a teacher, not at all, but you will have a nice, decent career. So again, if money is your uh, motivation, you might wanna rethink that, um, but it is a decent paying career and it is, you definitely go up in pay with your experience and you could go into college teaching. You also get the summer off and I don't want to really highlight that as a reason to go into it but I have to say having a work um, summer balance is a benefit of the job because I've worked in jobs many times where you have two weeks vacation a year and that just goes by in a blink of an eye and it's draining teaching is draining and you won't know that a summer goes by fast and how needed it is once you're a teacher so it's insulting when people say oh yeah teaching's easy you have summer that's absolutely we wouldn't even make it through the whole year I'll tell you that um, you do need your summers it recharges you um, but that allows you to travel that allows you to learn more and um, get ready for the next year it's just um, a beautiful career to work with people that are passionate about kids passionate about health Helping people and you're working with people that love learning. So I have found out the more I know, the more I don't know. I am constantly learning and kids keep you young, but I am here to learn. And if you're passionate about learning, it's the best job because you're constantly learning and growing in your career. It is an evolving field. It's not the same when I started 20 years ago. And so if any of these things interest you, consider teaching. All right, and finally, uh, what advice can you give to aspiring teachers? So, okay, so a couple of things I would again advise, and I advise, and that is that 
try to get your master's degree with your teaching. As you know, it's not the highest paid career. It is decent, but it's not the highest. If you can, if you can combine your teaching experience with your bachelor's and your master's, you're going to start at a higher pay grade. So knowing that the pay is an issue, get your master's, do it while you're young, have the energy and get that higher pay right off the bat. Um, I would also think about, do you want to do single subject or do you want to have the option to do all? Talk to your counselor about that and ask them what they would recommend. I really recommend an administrative credential. It just opens more doors. You'll have more possibilities. And um, Let's see, the other thing for teaching and recommendation, we really need diversity in teaching. I'm gonna be honest with you. I really need people with unique backgrounds. We need more faces of the children in our classroom and we are lacking that and the kids need it. Um, so we need more diversity. So um, if you are bilingual, if you um, have lived in another country, think about being a teacher because I can tell you those kids need your faces in the classroom. We really need that and we want that. And I hope that's helpful. Wow, that was such an insightful interview. Thank you so much, Ms. Smith. You shared some incredibly perceptive advice into your career in teaching. We hope you learned as much as we did. A huge thank you to Ms. Smith for joining us today. We are SRPCC and we hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.